Well, uh, Small Soldiers, um, film directed by uh, Joe Dante, who also directed uh, Gremlins, uh, starring David Cross, Jay Moyer, Gregory Smith, uh, Kirsten Dunst, uh, and the voices of Frank Langella and Tommy Lee Jones. Joe Dante also uh, directed Gremlins. Uh, in fact, uh, there's actually a little reference to Gremlins uh, uh, quite early on in this film I thought was kind of cool. Uh, and this film actually uh, follows a, a very kind of a similar plot. Uh, with uh, a lot of sort of small creatures overpowering humans. Uh, now this is actually my second attempt at reviewing this film. Uh, the first one I did a few years ago, I didn't really have any clue what it was I was going to say before I started recording. I hadn't even re-watched the film in preparation for the review, so it, you know, it was kind of crap, so I figured I'll do it again. So uh, overall, I thought it was a reasonable film, you know. Um, I think the main problem I think this film suffers from is it is essentially just Gremlins again. Same director, so it's obviously going to have a very kind of similar style. If you've seen Gremlins, there's really nothing in this film that you haven't seen before. Uh, the acting is uh, pretty good. Uh, you've got a young Kirsten Dunst in here playing a very strong female character, actually. I, I really liked her character in this. Very, uh, very sort of tomboyish uh, almost, uh, but also very much a, a female character sort of filling the role of uh, the love factor, but also kind of um, leading the way in the battle against the soldiers uh, on many occasions. Uh, the actor who plays the main character, Alan Gregory Smith, I didn't think he was uh, particularly good. In fact, looking through the years since this one, he actually hasn't found much work, which doesn't surprise me because he doesn't come across as a particularly good actor in, in this. There's been a lot of complaints, I think, from people about, you know, obviously with this being about toys, it's obviously a kid's film. It's too violent or something. I mean, it's got war soldiers uh, fighting, uh, but nobody dies, and I think there's very little blood. I think there's just enough violence in here, and most of the violence is just toys being blown to bits or smashed apart or whatever. You know, they're not actually real people, are they? So, no, I, I, I don't see how there's too much violence in this. This kind of violence is the reason why toy soldiers even exist in the first place. You know, it's because boys want to see uh, them get smashed to bits or fight each other or whatever, you know, if you are if you have a problem with the violence in this film, you must have a problem with toy soldiers existing in the first place, really. But this is the, very much a, a film, I think, for boys. I don't think girls would enjoy this film at all, because it is just soldiers fighting. Uh, I think maybe the basic premise to this film, it's obviously also the other major element that this film borrows from is Toy Story, uh, but it, it takes maybe a kind of a, a kind of more sci-fi, more slightly more believable concept the idea of toys coming to life and having a mind of their own, and obviously you know, the toys are the enemy in this one, whereas the toys were the good guys in Toy Story. Uh, but I think there's a lot of suspension of disbelief in terms of the basic premise, or you know, the setting up of the basic premise, in that these are small toys, you know, that can be blown to bits or smashed apart quite easily, and yet they're, they're able to overpower a bunch of adults, and quite a distance, why not just squish them? Why not just pick them up and pull their heads off or whatever? I don't really understand how they could uh, overpower humans. That maybe was kind of a problem in Gremlins, except that the Gremlins sort of swarmed in on the humans very, very quickly. Uh, there were a ton of them sort of very quickly, whereas for most of this film, there's only six of them. And also the idea that essentially these toys' artificial intelligence is created by this very advanced chip, which obviously doesn't exist in real life chip that can apparently learn. The toys sort of seem to understand that they are toys, you know, they're just machines with chips inside their head because there's actually one point where one of them pulls their head apart because he knows the chip's in there in order to create artificial intelligence of their own. So artificial intelligence creating artificial intelligence, these sort of little girl dolls uh, that uh, for some reason have completely different personalities even though they're made, even though they're made from the same chips, they're sort of stereotype. Uh, teenage girls. Some might accuse them of being a little sexist, actually, except for the fact that there's a very strong female lead character in this play by Kirsten Dunst. So I think maybe that's where they thought they could get away with the rather sexist uh, girl dolls, because there's actually quite a strong female character. And also, they're villains, these female dolls, created by the villains, for that matter. So, again, I think that's okay. I don't think there's been any complaints about the film being sexist, so, yeah, I think they're probably uh, okay on that, part, that front. But, you know, the toys understand that they are just toys with chips inside their head, they understand what they are, and yet they still seem to think that they are actually fighting a war, and that these humans are actually 
trying to defend the Gorgonites, you know, that they're not just simply humans trying to live out their lives. So, you know, again, I don't quite understand that. The toys are delusional, but at the same time they understand what they are. It's a little confusing. You know, they don't really explain exactly why the toys are think or assume that the Gorgonites, uh, that the humans are the Gorgonites' allies. But uh, that's, I guess, you know, again, just things you have to accept in order to get us to the situation of the uh, human battling the toys. Uh, there's a lot of good action in this. In fact, I think, you know, the last sort of quarter of this film where it's the sort of nine adults fighting the soldiers, like, uh, in various different ways, that's actually really good. I think if they got to that a bit sooner, this could have been a much more enjoyable film, you know. If they'd gotten to the factory where all of these massive, massive boxes of toys and there's hundreds and thousands of soldiers, if they'd gotten to that stage a little bit earlier, maybe about halfway through the film, this film could have been a lot more enjoyable, I think. I think they, they needed to get to that situation of an intense battle with hundreds of soldiers a bit quicker. But at the same time, the fact that it's a little shorter means that it's it's, it's all good stuff, you know, maybe if it had gone on for a bit longer it might have dragged on for a bit, who knows. The main character, Alan, his background actually is another thing that's a little gripe I have with the film. He, he seems to have uh, this reputation for being a massive troublemaker when he's been expelled from like two or three different schools and he's set fire to a school or something. But when you see him, he's just a completely normal kid. He, he's not the kind of kid who's going to do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Again, don't quite follow that. Uh, I think another minor thing that kind of irritated me is there's a lot of pop culture references uh, to various war films, uh, the soldiers, the commandos, they keep quoting other films uh, at various times and it got really irritating after a while. Yeah. It was kind of like, ah, oh, stop it, stop quoting other films, it's, it's annoying, it, it, it's kind of a, the desperate attempt at comedy really, it's, it's, it's a sign really that you don't have uh, any original comedy or jokes of your own, you're just going to make reference to something for the sake of making reference to something, you know. I suppose maybe there are, some might argue that there's too many characters in this. Uh, there's a lot of side or subplots uh, to the characters in this film that don't really go anywhere. There's a sort of, you're introduced to the two guys that end up creating these toys first of all, and you assume for a while that they're the main characters because they get a lot of development. But no, they're not. They're, they're just uh, really the people who create the toys. Alan and uh, the Kirsten Dunst character are actually the main characters, so I think they maybe, again, spent a bit too much time developing characters that aren't really that important. Uh, Alan's parents and uh, Kirsten Dunst's parents, you know, they, they get a little bit of development, uh, they develop a little bit of a rivalry because the two of them are neighbours, you know, some satellite dish that uh, Kirsten's father has uh, to chop down. Kirsten's father's played by Phil Hartman, and this was his last film before he was uh, tragically murdered, actually. A little bit of trivia there for you. Uh, there's a little bit of rivalry or a feud between them. Again, doesn't go anywhere. Alan's father is seeing a psychiatrist or something because he keeps sort of flipping out and getting overly angry. Again, it doesn't really go anywhere, so... A bit too much time spent uh, developing characters that aren't that important. They would have preferred to it to have been almost entirely just Kirsten Dunst and Alan and their relationship, because that was a really interesting kind of relationship, because to Kirsten's, Dunst's character is actually a very strong female character. I've heard some people suggest that she's not really a girl, she's just a boy in girl form, which is an interesting way of putting it, and I guess I can kind of see that because she doesn't do very many girly things in, in this film that I can recall. Suggested that uh, there's too much dialogue in this film, I don't see that myself, I think there's just enough. I think there's just enough violence as well, I think they, they got a good level for that for a kid's film. The only real major gripe I think I have for this film that makes it fall apart is the fact that we've seen it all in Gremlins before. And, and that, that really is a sort of big monkey wrench for me because it really prevented me from enjoying the film to the sort of full level that I would have been able to otherwise because it's nothing that I haven't seen in, before in Gremlins. Now if you haven't seen Gremlins, you, know, you will most definitely enjoy this film. And I think I did enjoy this film for the time that it was on, but by the time it was over, I just wanted to watch Gremlins, to be honest. I didn't really feel like watching this film again. It's Joe Dante really just giving uh, his film from the 80s a new coat of paint, you know. Perhaps it would have been more interesting if they'd actually had a different director. You bring along uh, this director of Gremlins just to make Gremlins again, really, with just a new coat of paint. 
but overall, if you haven't seen Gremlins, you know, you'll definitely enjoy this. If you have seen Gremlins, you'll probably enjoy it like I did, you know, while it was on, but you probably won't want to see it again, because I don't think I will want to see this again. So this is maybe, I think, uh, a three out of five film for me. Okay, see ya.